This is one concept you have to understand and apply if you're going to be effective at doing lymphatic drainage. Now, the problem is most people that are talking about lymphatic drainage or teaching you how to do manual massage or dry brushing or gua sha, they're not explaining where the lymphatic fluid drains. Not exactly. In theory, they're correct. However, the information they're giving is giving false directions, which I believe is one of the reasons why people are not effective effective at lymphatic drainage. They're not seeing the results that they could and should be seeing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain exactly where the lymphatic fluid drains, what to look for, and then one way that you can make sure that your body, your lymphatic system has the capability of draining. And when I say draining, I mean returning lymph fluid back to the circulatory system. So let's get started. The lymphatic system is going to drain lymph back to the blood supply. So a lot of people are saying you move the fluid towards the heart because the heart is where blood gets reoxygenated, it gets returned to the blood supply. So that's where what I mean by when I say they're not totally inaccurate because that's true. The lymph does return to the heart. However, when you look at the anatomy, our heart is over here. If we're brushing to the heart, we're actually missing where the lymphatic fluid drains. The lymphatic fluid will eventually end up here, but the fluid from our toes, the fluid from our arms, the fluid from our head needs to go somewhere else first before it ends up here. And where that location is, it's called the termini. Termini meaning ending. And we can find that above our collarbones. So a lot of people when they're doing this too, they're going too far in. They're going essentially above above the sternum. So right where my little pendant is, that's not where you want to be. This isn't where the lymphatic fluid drains ultimately. Where it is, is it's above our collarbones in the supraclavicular fossa. And all that means is supra above clavicular clavicle fossa indent. So it's right in here. A good landmark is if you look at a mirror, drawing a line down from your earlobes is where your lymphatic fluid drains. So let's talk about what drains into what. Because you may think, well, the right side drains the right side, the left side drains the left side. And that's actually not accurate. The right side, so the right clavicle, the right termini is going to drain the right half of our face, head and neck, our right hand, arm, our breast and rib cage, following it around to the back. So that area is draining into the right termini. The left termini is going to drain the mirror of the right side. So the left side of our face, head and neck, our arm, our breast, chest, left back, and then it's gonna drain our abdomen and both legs. So the left side is actually going to be draining a whole lot more fluid than the right side. So one of the things that we can be looking for is above our collarbones, are we puffy? Do we see our collarbones or does it feel spongy? If it feels puffy or spongy, that could indicate congestion, meaning your lymph doesn't have the capability of draining back down into the blood supply, back down into the left subclavian vein or the right subclavian vein. So one of the things that I always tell people to do is look at your collarbones in a relaxed position. If you are relaxed and you're puffy, there's a good chance that it's not draining well enough anyway. Now, you can be puffy on one side and not the other. And then I would encourage you to think, okay, if I'm puffy on the right side, what else is happening on the right side of my head, neck, arm, breast, back? Do I have more congestion? Do I have more symptoms there? Or the opposite. If you're more puffy on the left side, maybe you're experiencing more abdominal bloating. Maybe you're experiencing more fluid retention in your feet. That's also possible. Now, with the discrepancy between what is draining where, just to give you a rough visual, the right side, the right clavicle that is draining into the right subclavian vein is draining about half a liter of lymph fluid a day, roughly. Now this is going to vary based on the person and the size, but roughly half a liter is going to go to the right subclavian vein. And then the left side is going to drain about two and a half liters of lymphatic fluid 
each day. That's a huge difference. So it's really important that we're draining and that this isn't congested. So if you're puffy above the collarbone, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ring finger and middle finger and drawing that line down from your earlobe to just above your collarbones, you're gonna get it right in the divot, right in the deepest part. Now, if you can't do this, or when you do this, if you don't see this big divot, that's okay. Just use your ears as a landmark. And what you're gonna do is you're going to gently push down, or you can do circles, but it's very gentle. We are not digging in, because remember, about 70% of our lymphatic system is just below the surface. This is not a deep tissue massage. More is not better. Less is more when it comes to lymph. So everything that we do is going to be very gentle. And what I'm gonna recommend that you do is when you're doing this, you can see that I'm stretching the skin. There's a lot of stretch in the skin. Stretching the skin helps stretch the lymph vessels, which causes fluid to drain more easily. You can see that I am not doing this and I'm not digging in. It should not be painful. Now, if you're really puffy and congested, there may be some discomfort because of inflammation. So you may need to start slow. And by slow, I mean maybe doing 10 circles or 10 pumps, one second per. So like one pump, one pump, one pump, or one circle, one circle, one circle. You can see that it's about one per second. You may wanna do that 10 times up to five times a day because on average, what people need is between 10 and 50 stimulus, so stimulating the termini, in order to get it to start draining. Now, because this is where it drains, this is why I always start and finish with decongesting the termini. I don't mean when I say we're gonna open up the termini that the termini closes. The termini is always open, but it can become congested. So when I say opening up, I really mean decongesting. And I'll try and be better about using let's decongest the area or let's pump the area. So I always start and end with this to make sure that all of the fluid has the capability of draining. Now another really important note about this area is all fluid moves from high pressure to low pressure, regardless of where it is, in the body, in nature. Above our clavicles right here is the lowest pressure. So it wants to suck and vacuum fluid up into this area. The highest pressure is gonna be at our fingers and our toes, which makes sense. So as long as this remains low pressure, which it will become high pressure if it becomes congested, fluid is going to want to naturally flow and drain to that area. So we gotta make sure that we keep this open and decongested so that the lymphatic fluid can return to the blood supply, i.e. the heart. So whenever you are looking at doing lymphatic drainage, always, always remember that the lymphatic fluid, all of your lymphatic fluid returns back to the blood supply above the collarbones. You are not pulling the fluid to your heart down here. Once it drains, all of the fluid comes above the collarbone. Once it gets to the collarbone and goes into the subclavian veins, then it's gonna return to the heart. I hope this helps. Double check and see what you see going on above your collarbone. Bones. If you're puffy, you probably need to decongest that area. And like I said, anywhere between 10 to 50 pumps a couple times a day. And the more congested you are, the more consistent you need to be in order to get things moving. I know that this is gonna help and make a huge difference with your lymphatic drainage as I've seen it improve hundreds of thousands of people's lives over the years. So give this a try. Make sure to subscribe so you can get more lymphatic and more drainage technique advice on my page. Let me know below too how it goes.